Kings. Welcome back to Passport Kings. Today on Passport Kings, um, imagine weeks of planning, dishing out thousands of dollars on hotels, flights, uh, passports, and visa, and taking days off work, and rushing to the airport, and sitting on a plane for many hours just to get to a country and not be allowed in. This nightmare has happened to a few of the kings and queens. And on this episode, we're going to discuss some of the countries that may even do the same thing to you. Engage. I'm Rockland. I travel the globe making videos and recommending destinations. Join me so we can discover, preview, and book your next vacation. This is Passport Kings. Welcome aboard abroad. Subscribe and enable notifications so you can see all the other videos you may like. People can be deemed inadmissible for a wide variety of reasons. Having a visa does not guarantee you entry into some countries. It only guarantees you the right to travel to the port of that country. Some people have asked me this question about certain countries, and although it should be on a case-by-case -case basis, I sent this question out to my Facebook group page and my Twitter page, and I asked them, has anyone been denied to any countries? What I got in response was some comments that we all need to take heed to. All right, so first was Panama. One woman said, me and my boyfriend were sent back to the US. It reads, once we exited the gate, customs were waiting right outside for us. They took us into an office and told us that we were red flag. Mind you, I was convicted at the age of 18 and now I'm 25. They sent us right back to Miami and we couldn't transfer to anywhere else from there either. Then it goes on to say, double check before booking because not only did we lose our money, we also lost our time. She also goes on to say about how rude customs was. She said they took our phones and passports while we waited for the next flight out to Miami, which was 12 hours later. The, the next person said some of the same things. They read, you cannot travel to Panama with the criminal record. You can't even have a layover there. He says, I'm speaking from experience. I lost a lot of money and time when I tried. All right, secondly is Canada. Unfortunately, getting into Canada with the DUI is not as simple as showing up at the border with a valid United States passport. If you've ever been arrested or convicted for driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol, regardless of whether it was a misdemeanor or felony offense, you may be inadmissible to Canada and denied entry regardless of whether or not you have any intentions on driving while you're in that country. A DUI including civil infractions and actual physical control DUI violations can cause you to get turned away at the border. There are two ways to overcome this though. One, the first option is a temporary residence permit, which lets a person enter or stay in Canada for a specific amount of time, provided they have a valid reason to visit. Second is criminal rehabilitation which is an application process wherein a person petitions Canada immigration authorities to forgive their prior DUI convictions. To be eligible to apply for criminal rehab, five years must have passed since the completion of your sentence, which includes payments of fines, driving courses, community service, probation, and any other conditions which may have been imposed on you. But that's for DUIs. In order for a U.S. felon to be granted entry into Canada, you must have a certificate of rehabilitation issued to you by the Canadian Embassy. The main consideration is the severity of the crime and how long ago it was. But remember, they consider their crimes based on Canadian law. So a misdemeanor DUI that you got here could be a felony DUI in Canada. This episode is brought to you by what used to be called travel hacking, but is correctly named award stacking. Save thousands of dollars on flights while rapidly improving your credit. Personally, this system has changed my travel life. Right now, the system is over 50% off. Click the link above and start traveling nonstop for so much less. And the last spot we'll discuss today is Japan. Uh, one person said, I went to Japan for grad school classes, but either the university or the justice ministry screwed up some paperwork for my visa. Apparently, my name was misspelled. So I was told to just come in and have everything settled on the ground. I explained the situation to the immigration officers and was promptly taken off to detention for a couple of hours. During which time I was formally denied entry and then told by a friendly immigration officer to write an appeal in longhand. 
Apparently, they were not procedurally allowed to admit me as a student without a visa, but they had more leeway to make a determination on an appeal. In the detention area, I came across many Asian and European tourists who were trying to transit without visas, as well as an American guy who had apparently been deported in the past and was trying to get back in. His case required an overnight stay at a guarded hotel room. So, as of now, we're just going to be cautious of Japan, Canada, and Panama. And likely, if you haven't ever gotten into any trouble in the U.S., you probably will never have to experience this. One last thing I want to talk about is dual citizenship. A lot of people feel that there are a lot of bragging rights to be had for having more than one passport. And maybe so. But be very careful having more than one passport in the customs area all across the world. Showing off that you have multiple nationalities is generally a bad idea. People report pulling out their two passports and having machine guns pointed at them. One person said he was yelled at at U.S. immigration and told him he had 10 minutes to pick a nationality. And they also went on and said that saying the wrong answer could leave him with fines up to $50,000 and six months in jail. So just be careful out there with dual citizenship. So back to being denied entry. In most cases, you'll be sent back on the first available flight. If there's no more flights going out that day, you will be taken to a detention center. Then you'll be brought back to the airport once a suitable flight has been found. It usually is the airline's responsibility to pay for your stay at that detention center. And they'll also pay for the law enforcement agencies that are escorting you back and forth to the airport. But remember, airport does have a right to recover this course. Yes, it's also the airport's responsibility to fly you back to either the point of embarkation or to any country where you'll be admitted. Like back to your home country if you're deemed inadmissible to your destination. However, like I said, this does not mean that the airline won't try to recover most of that cost from you. You can usually use your return flight if you have one. Or they may ask you to pay for a new ticket too. If you don't have a return ticket or not enough money to pay, they may let you use a phone to call a friend or relative. In extreme cases, the U.S. may extend the line of credit to you. But like I said in my passport denied video, they may not let you get a new passport until you pay that back. So never go to another country unless you're sure you're going to be let in. And then walk through customs like a king of passport tickets. Peace.